Hey, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to transform photos of faces into cartoon caricatures. The exaggeration of facial features are achieved using the Face Aware feature, which was added to the Liquify tool in version CC. Open a high resolution photo of someone who's facing forward. The first step is to crop the photo to the head and shoulders. To do this, open your Crop tool and click Width, Height, and Resolution. To ensure your results will look similar to mine, click the Clear button and in the Width field, type in 1840px for pixels and leave the Height field empty. Make its resolution 300 pixels per inch. Size and position your subject inside the Crop's bounding box and to accept it, click the check mark at the top. To see your image at 100%, press Ctrl or Command 1. You could also zoom out or in by pressing Ctrl or Command and the plus or minus key on your keyboard. Before we continue, I just want to mention if you want to know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials, hit that subscribe button. And if you're liking this video, please take a moment to click like. Open your Move tool by pressing V. We'll make a copy of our subject so we always have the original intact. Press Ctrl or Command J and hide the original. Next, we'll separate the subject from its background. Open the Properties panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Properties. Click Remove Background. Photoshop automatically isolates the subject and makes a layer mask of its shape next to the layer, thereby masking out the background. We'll convert this layer into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. To do this, click the icon at the upper right and click Convert to Smart Object. Go to Filter and Liquify. On the left, Click the Face Aware icon, which, as I mentioned, was added in version CC. We can manipulate the shapes of the eyes, nose, mouth, and other parts of the face, such as the forehead, chin, jawline, and face width. I'll click on the chain links between the left and right eye characteristics, so both eyes will be affected to the same degree. Since the eyes of my subject look squinty, I'll make them look squintier by dragging the size, height, and width to minus 100. I won't exaggerate the tilt and distance because the original eyes of my subject aren't noticeably angled or set wide or close apart, nor will I manipulate her nose. For the mouth, I'll drag the smile and upper lip to 100, the lower lip to minus 100, and the mouth width and height to 100. My subject's forehead, chin height, jawline, and face width aren't prominent, so I won't exaggerate any of them. If you want to exaggerate the features even more, open back the filter by pressing Ctrl-Alt-F on Windows or command Ctrl f on a Mac. I'll click the chain links of the eye size and height and make them minus 100 each, and make the smile and upper lip 100. I'll make the lower lip minus 100. Next, I'll show you how to make the neck super thin, which makes our caricature look even more cartoonish. Control or Command click the cutout subject to select its shape. Press Q to see it as a quick mask. Open your zoom tool, and drag it over the bottom half of the head. If you don't see the entire chin, press and hold the space bar and drag the image. Open the Curvature Pen tool, which was added to Photoshop in version CC 2018. I did an in-depth tutorial showing how to use it, which I provided its link to in my video's description. Place the tool directly on the edge of the quick mask where the neck and chin meet. Click to make the first anchor point, then release. Continue to click directly along the edge of the chin to make pads along the contours. The last anchor point should be placed directly on the edge of the quick mask where the neck and chin meet. 
Open your pen tool and press Ctrl or Command 0 to see your entire document. Place your tool outside the document and click to make another path. Click outside the bottom corner to make another path and again outside the opposite corner. Click approximately here and click back on the first anchor point to complete the path. Right click or secondary click anywhere on the path to open the flyout list and click Make Selection. The feather radius is 0 pixels, which will keep the selection sharp, not soft. We'll fill the selection with a quick mask by filling it with black, and since black is the background color, press Ctrl or Command plus Delete. Deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. Press Q to convert the quick mask into a selection, which encompasses the entire shape of the head. Press Ctrl or Command J to cut and copy the head onto its own layer. Make the head and shoulders layer active and open the Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. If this message pops up, it's just letting us know that the smart filters will be temporarily turned off while we use the Transform tool. Just click OK. Click the Warp Transform icon and place your cursor to the right of the right side of the neck. Drag it to the left. Go to the left side of the neck and drag it to the right. Continue to finesse the neck's width and placement. Then press Enter or Return twice. Shift click the top layer to make it active as well and convert them into one smart object. Make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Temporarily hide the copy and make the original layer active. Go to Filter, Blur, and Surface Blur. This filter essentially blurs an image while preserving its edges. The radius determines the area affected by the blur, while Threshold determines which pixels will be included in the blur. Make the radius 20 pixels and the Threshold 10 levels. As I toggle between the before and after, we can see the difference. Go to Filter, Stylize, and Oil Paint. The stylization is 5, the cleanliness is 3, the scale is 0 0.1, and the bristle detail is 0. Make sure lighting is not checked. Go to Image, Adjustments, and Shadows Highlights. I use this filter mostly to bring out details and shadows. For this effect, we'll leave all the settings at their default amounts, except for the shadows amount, which will be 50%. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Levels. Adjustment layers affect all the layers below them in the Layers panel. However, we want this adjustment layer to affect just the one layer below it. To do this, Click the Clipping Mask icon, or go to Layer and Create Clipping Mask. Make the input highlight level 140, which brightens our image considerably. Don't be concerned about it being too bright. It'll become darker once we add the next layer. Make the top layer visible and active. Change its Blend Mode to Multiply. Go to Filter. Artistic, and Poster Edges. Make the Edge Thickness 8, the Edge Intensity 2, and the Posterization 2. We'll copy the Oil Paint Filter onto the top layer by placing your cursor anywhere over the Oil Paint Filter and pressing Alt or Option as you drag a copy of it up onto the top layer. Drag a copy of the Shadows Highlights filter up onto the top layer as well. Double click Shadows Highlights to open it and make the Shadows amount 100. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Levels again. Clip it to the layer below it. and drag the Input Highlights level to 235 
or you could just type it in. If you want to adjust its color vibrancy, open the Adjustments panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Adjustments. Click the Vibrance icon. Clip it to the layer and adjust the vibrance to your liking. Lastly, we'll add a background. Make the bottom caricature layer active. We'll create a new layer below it by control or command clicking the new layer icon. Click the foreground color to open the color picker. Pick a color you like. I already know the color I want for my background, so I'll type it into the hexadecimal field. To fill the empty layer with your foreground color, press Alt or Option plus Delete. Convert it into a smart object. Go to Filter and Lens Correction. Open the Custom tab. Make the vignette amount minus 100 and the midpoint 30. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.